Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to solve this quadratic equation here in four ways. First, we're going to solve this by factoring. And then second, we're going to solve it by completing the square. Then we solve it using quadratic formula. And lastly, we're going to use the method introduced by Professor Posh and Law. Let's get started. Let us uh, first solve this quadratic equation by factoring. So there are several ways to factor this uh, trinomial here. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to factor this one by grouping. And why are we going to do by grouping? So the polynomial only has uh, three terms. So if we use the factoring by grouping to factor out a trinomial, then we're going to find a way to express this trinomial as a polynomial with four terms. And how are we going to do that? We're going to split this into two terms in such a way that we can use factoring by grouping after splitting this middle term 2x. So to do that, what we're going to do here is to multiply the a and c. So this coefficient of x squared and the constant term, negative 15. And a times negative 15 will get negative 120. And now we're going to factor this negative 120 in such a way that the sum of the factors is equal to the coefficient of our middle term, which is equal to 2x. And what are the factors of negative 120 whose sum is positive 2? So they are negative 10 and positive 12. Therefore, we can write this 2x here as negative 10x plus 12x. So that is equal to 2x. So we can now write our trinomial as 8x squared and then splitting this 2x here to negative 10x plus 12x and then minus 15 equal to 0. This is where we apply factoring by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms and then the last two terms. And these groups will produce a common factor. So we can write the left-hand side of this equation as 2x times the quantity 4x minus 5. So that is equal to this first group here. And then the second group here can be factored to 3 times the quantity 4x minus 5. Now we see a common factor, which is equal to 4x minus 5. So factoring this common factor, we'll get here the factorization of our trinomial, which is the quantity 2x plus 3 times the quantity 4x minus 5. If you want to learn a fast and easy way to factor out trinomials, I have a famous video in my channel. If you want to check it out, please click the information icon at the upper right corner of this video. Going back to our equation, so the product is equal to 0 if one of the factors is equal to 0. So this implies that either 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 or 4x minus 5 equals 0. And this first equation here will give us 2x equals negative 3. And dividing both sides by 2, we'll get x equal to negative 3 halves. And for the second equation, so we'll get here 4x equals 5. Dividing both sides by 4, we'll get x equal to 5 over 4. So our equation has two real roots and they are negative 3 halves and 5 over 4. Let's move to the second method. Let's solve this equation by completing the square. So the first step here is to isolate the constant term. So we're going to move the negative 15 to the right-hand side, and that becomes positive 15. And then we divide both sides by 8, and we'll get here x squared plus 1 over 4x equal to 15 over 8. And now what should we add to both sides of this equation? to make this left-hand side a perfect square trinomial. So we can find that constant by dividing the coefficient of x by 2. So that is the same thing as multiplying that coefficient 1 fourth by 1 half and then squaring it. So that is 1 over 8 quantity squared, which is equal to 1 over 64. So we're going to add 1 over 64 to both sides of this equation. And now the left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial. We can now write the left-hand side of this equation as x plus 1 over 8. So that is just the square root of this. And then quantity squared equal to this 15 over 8 here can be written as 120 over 64. So just multiply the numerator and denominator by 8. And then we have here plus 1 over 64. And taking the square root of both sides of this equation, don't forget the plus minus sign on the right-hand side of our equation. So plus minus square root of 121 over 64, and square root of 121 is equal to 11. Square root of 64 is 8, so this is equal to plus minus 11 over 8. So our x here is equal to negative 1 over 8 
plus minus 11 over 8. So the two values of x are x equals negative 1 over 8 minus 11 over 8 and x equal to negative 1 over 8 plus 11 over 8. And this first value of x can be written as negative 12 over 8, which is equal to negative 3 halves. And the second value of x is equal to 10 over 8, which is equal to 5 over 4. So our answer is consistent with the result of the first method. Let's now move to the third method. Let us solve this quadratic equation using quadratic formula. I hope you still remember your formula. So in our formula, we need the values of a, b, and c. And for this quadratic equation, which is already written in a standard form, so a, b, and c are equal to 8, 2, and negative 15, respectively. So using our formula, the roots of our quadratic equation are given by negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And we can write the radicand here as 4. And then this is 8 times negative 15 is negative 120 times negative 4. So that is positive 480. So our radicand is equal to 484. So to simplify this radical, we factor out the radicand. And clearly, this number here is divisible by 4 because 84 is divisible by 4. So if we factor out 4, we'll get here the other factor, which is equal to 121. And these two numbers are perfect squares. So we can write the x values as negative 2 plus minus square root of 4 times 121. And the square root of this product is just equal to 2 times 11. So that is equal to 22. So the two x values are negative 2 minus 22 all over 16, and then negative 2 plus 22 all over 16. And the first x value can be written as negative 24 over 16, which is equal to negative 3 halves. And this second value here can be written as 20 over 16, which is equal to 5 over 4. Again, we got the same values for x. Now let's move to our last technique. In this last technique, we're going to use the method introduced by Professor Potion Law. And this uh, technique uh, goes this way. So first, let's make the coefficient of x squared equal to 1. So by dividing both sides by 8, we'll get here x squared plus 1 over 4x minus 15 over 8 equal to 0. And if we have this uh, quadratic equation where the coefficient of x squared here is equal to 1, we know that the sum of roots is equal to the negative of the coefficient of x. So the sum of roots here is equal to the negative of this. So if we think of this as b, okay, and then this one is our capital C, then the sum of roots of this quadratic equation, which is also the roots of this original equation, is equal to negative 1 over 4. And the roots of this quadratic equation can be written as negative b over 2 plus or minus some number u. Keep in mind that when we add these uh, two x values, we'll get a value which is equal to negative b because the plus and minus u cancel out. And we'll get negative b over 2 plus negative b over 2. So that is equal to negative b. So because b is equal to 1 fourth, we may write the roots of our equation into this form, negative 1 over 8 plus or minus u. Another characteristic of the roots of this quadratic equation is that the product of roots is equal to the constant term, which is equal to negative 15 over 8. So that is always true if the coefficient of x squared here is equal to 1. And because we represent the roots as negative 1 over 8 plus or minus u, then we'll get the equation product of the roots is equal to negative 15 over 8. And this product on the left-hand side can be written as 1 over 64 minus u squared. And then moving the 1 over 64 to the right-hand side, we'll get this difference here. And then we'll get u squared equal to 1 over 64 plus 15 over 8. And the right-hand side of this equation can be written as 1 plus 120 all over 64. And here we'll get u squared equal to 121 over 64. So from this, we'll get the values of u which are plus or minus the square root of 121 over 64. So that is equal to plus minus 11 over 8. So here, whichever value we choose for u, 
we'll get the same exact values for x. So choosing u to be equal to uh, 11 over 8, we'll get the two values of x, which are negative 1 over 8 plus minus 11 over 8. And here we'll get the two roots, which are negative 1 over 8 minus 11 over 8 and negative 1 over 8 plus 11 over 8. And, and this difference here can be written as negative 12 over 8, which is equal to negative 3 halves. And this sum here can be written as 10 over 8, which is equal to 5 over 4, which are the same values as we got in the previous three methods. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.